Walt Disney founded the Disney Brothers Studio in Hollywood in 1923, and for 99 years, they've mostly been recycling the same characters and distribution models over and over again. But imagine the creation of a new type of Disney, one where you get to decide who the next Mickey Mouse will be. You could be in charge of the storyline and main character development. Today, we're exploring what a modern day Disney or Pixar could look like. If organic programming like Coco Melon can be worth $3 billion, and bored apes through NFTs can create brand new tightly knit communities from nothing, then get ready for the next Buzz Lightyear. Let's get started. There's a new kind of show called The Real Metaverse that's on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, and Discord. All online distribution. And the interesting thing is the characters, they're actually NFT PFPs, and that's totally driven by the internet community. So it's actually one of the first ever animated series that will let the community have a say in the storyline and the character development. The company behind it is called Invisible Universe which Initialized invested in because every so often, entertainment changes completely. Here's the real metaverse. It's time to put the fun in non-fungible. <laughs> Somebody slap me. I will. Ow. The real metaverse. The internet's favorite NFT PFPs are transported to Hollywood. It's a parody on the real world, only with bored apes and robotos. Oh, wow. My chakras are literally buzzing right now. Oh, <laughs> hell yeah. This is what I'm talking about. Everything about this is ridiculous and I love it. They've produced over 30 episodes and the first few have already dropped on TikTok, YouTube, and Twitter. Two episodes get released every week, about a minute or two each. Here's the CEO, Trisha Biggio. So we are obsessed with this idea of building in public. We love the idea of community ownership. And when I talk about Invisible, I'll talk more about how we've been building with that ethos in Web 2. Um, but as we look at Web 3, we think there's a huge opportunity to allow people to collaborate with us on the storytelling. Um, and we've built a team of creatives who understand like what the kind of right guardrails are to allow for people to have a role and a say. Um, so if you buy an NFT along the project, The Real Metaverse, what that gets you is sort of a ticket to ride. <laughs> and what you're gonna get to do is collaborate with us in writing confessional interviews, um, eventually writing entire scenes, introducing new storylines and characters. Media is entering a new age where the internet means the audience can actually speak up. Just as Westworld on HBO started throwing in special details for their Reddit audience, so too are we seeing a new way of storytelling emerge like this. Disney had to rebuild itself with Disney Plus because internet distribution changed how all of this stuff worked. Tomorrow's franchises are gonna be distributed on the internet in a frictionless way where there's unlimited shelf space, perpetual distribution, community feedback, and constant involvement. That's why we think it's inevitable that the media industry will be more transparent in what they're building and allow people who are actually fans and community members to help to drive the storyline and to determine what happens with the main characters on the show. It's being built in public with this idea that, you know, our ideas as the studio are not always better than the community's ideas. And I think, you know, that kind of egoless approach to it is what the next generation wants. The communities that are represented on this show happen to be just a few of thousands of new internet communities that are springing up all the time, not just NFTs. The interesting thing to me about this type of storytelling is because it's around crypto, they're going to involve so many more people. And it doesn't just have to be that. It might even be a sports star's huge following or even brand new stories and characters from scratch. We're seeing people democratize storytelling and IP generation and, and identify hits for themselves 
based on um, their own participation versus I'm going to buy into this because you tell me I should. Um, and I think that sort of ownership in a literal sense, meaning they get to share in the value of it, as well as ownership in the building of it, are, are the two key components that we're going to continue to see unfurl over the coming years. Many years ago, Disney came up at a time where distribution was basically given or negotiated by people who owned the means of transmission, the broadcasters and the movie theaters. Back then, theater owners held all the power because you'd have to go to a theater to watch Mickey Mouse. All of that is changing and changing fast. Netflix and digital distribution didn't exist in its current form 10 years ago. But to us, clearly, the next Disney will emerge looking like a new IP show, something totally community-driven something driven by the internet, just like what Invisible Universe is doing. And so there's never been a better time to be a content creator, particularly when you have owned and operated IP. Um, and we're seeing the value of IP um, be recognized by the marketplace more than ever, because as things are being decentralized, the competition is fierce. Um, and so I think it's a, a unique time to be in the IP game. There's no doubt in my mind that the future of content distribution is gonna move further and further into a this community model. One of the things Trisha told me about that I haven't been able to get out of my head is this crazy fact, Moonbug Entertainment. It's a creator of popular kids shows such as Little Angel and Cocomelon. They were recently acquired by Blackstone PE for over $3 billion. Why? Because these properties amassed reach of hundreds of millions of people. What that tells us is creating a modern day Disney or Pixar is possible now and happening, where the next Woody or Buzz Lightyear is going to be decided by the community and introduced on the free and open internet. In many ways, the internet just got bigger um, and the distribution expanded. And so we have always believed that you can create indelible characters on social media platforms via the internet. Um, and what we mean by that is these aren't digital avatars or a virtual influencer. It's a character that is going to capture the hearts and minds of audiences and build community and eventually be able to go on to have a multitude of franchise extensions, be that publishing, film and TV, games, licensing and merch. Invisible Universe actually already is working with great celebrities like Jennifer Aniston and her dog character Clydeo and Quay Quay, the best friend of Serena Williams and Alexis Ohanian's daughter, Olympia. But what's most important about what Trisha and the team at Invisible Universe is building, it's a way for fans to participate in the monetization of their favorite show. So imagine now, as people build these huge brands, you could actually be rewarded for being the biggest Moana or Frozen fan early. If we do it right and we approach it correctly, um, we can build community, a different community. <laughs> um, we can allow for community members to get to share in the value of the IP we're creating. People now want to feel like they are a part of the communities that, or the characters that they love. They want to share in the value. They want to collaborate with you creatively. I can tell you in, in Web2, we've, we've seen it with data supporting it, that when you listen to the community, when you show them you're listening and you, you know, produce a video in three days responding to something they commented, the performance is unequivocally different. Invisible Universe has figured out a path to become what might be the next Pixar. And part of that journey is actually even knowing that it could be done. That's what Trisha taught me. If that's interesting, go check out the Invisible Universe jobs page and maybe even join the writer's room at the real metaverse by becoming a member of their community. Links in the description for that. So that's it for this week. If you liked this episode, click on the link in the description and jump over to the Initialized Capital channel where you'll find a whole lot more on startups, best practices, and what the future is going to be in so many industries. And as always, you're gonna hear more about things that I think are gonna be the future. That's what I want for you. And I want you to help build it. I'll see you next week.